ever heard about the South African Million Dollar? No, not the golf tournament, but the pigeon race. It is probably one of the biggest races in the world. And yes, it's racing pigeons. Known as the Pigeon Olympics of the world, it's a very tough race. And our conditions are the reason for that, because we've got a very dry climate. They fly it in summer, so, so it's hot and it's dry. And, and I can assure you that pigeon fanciers all over the world send their birds. We have about 7,000 birds that arrive, and about 3,500 go to the final race. Uh, and the whole world, I mean, you remember, you pay a $1,000 entry fee. Nobody's going to send a bird that he doesn't believe can win. Obviously, prize money, a million dollars. First prize, 200,000 US. And, and obviously coverage all over the world. If you win that race, you're known everywhere. Yeah, it's, a, it's a massive sport. You know, we've got over 4,000 uh, pigeon fancies in South Africa. They fly pigeons. And uh, unfortunately, we've never got the coverage that we deserved, you know, because... Uh, you know, if we look at the GDP contribution and what we do for our country with regards to sport, the jobs that we create, the sport should actually be highlighted a lot more than what it does. And obviously, you know, we we as competitive as anybody else. I mean, this is my life. It's a passion. We've been flying pigeons for 110 years in South Africa. My great-grandfather was in the World War, and he actually managed the pigeon loft in Egypt. And that was, at, the, at that point, the only form of communication in the World War. We are the trainers, we are the feed analysts, and we race them competitively. So my birds, you know, I'll get them into form, in condition. All of them are little athletes. Can you imagine having 300 Usain Bolts and you managing them and you're getting them into condition? We pair them up, we fly them on eggs and babies. So it's a very integrated, I actually want to say it's a very intellectual sport. take a little walk around here tell us what this place is all about and um, how you get ready I suppose for race day I'm, I'm sure it's a couple of years in the making yeah come and tell you what happens is if you look at the loft as we have it now the the loft is um, is, 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 a, is a racing loft that we have here we have the breeding loft obviously that's in a different venue so we'll breed the babies we then breed, take the babies and we put them into the race loft and then we home them if you look behind us you will see there's a net uh, and those, bay, those birds are currently being homed in the net. So they need to get to, used to their surroundings. If you look at the birds on the, on the right hand side here, these birds have been homed over the last week. So, so they've been outside, in the loft, outside, and we feed them obviously inside. And they, they take that as their own home, you know, because that's where they get food and that's where they, they know to go. And you'll see now, now they're starting to venture onto the roofs. And, and once they start doing that, then we know they've accepted the home. They will go from one roof to another and eventually they go up. And when they start going up, then we are ready now to train them. So the training process is quick. We have a guy standing in the yard and he will chase them. He literally chases them up and they start flying. And, and with time, we, what we'll do is we'll train them for 15 minutes initially. It's like an athlete starting a program. He can't run 100 kilometers immediately. What you do is he starts with one kilometer, two kilometers. About the massive purchase that you made, uh, I think you were headline news for a week or so. Five million rand on a pigeon. You don't hear that every day. No, you don't hear that every day. And, and, and it was a strategy. Quite honestly, we planned it for four years. We said to ourselves, we actually spoke to people, the platform where we bought the bird. We spoke to them and we said we want to buy the most expensive bird in the world. Now, there's a strategy behind that. Obviously, the marketing side. I, I am known worldwide by everybody in the pigeon industry. And that is a marketing ploy. Obviously, for people to be aware of you, your brand, and then to contact us and obviously support us. The, the second thing is the awareness, to make people aware of what the sport's about. You know, I don't think there's a South Africa now that doesn't know pigeon sport exists. And then obviously, from, from Samuel's point of view, the awareness for black and black communities and improving the sport and making them understand. I've had, you cannot believe how many phone calls I've had from young black boys saying that I've heard that you want to do this. Can I be part of it? Speak to us and welcoming us into your loft. Um, I've been so enriched and so enlightened by this and thank you for helping the country. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Well, these pigeons have certainly brought Mark a lot of luck, and I certainly hope that they'll do the same for me. Mahdeen Chenya in Alberton for ANN7.